Hello, my name is Luigi Biasco, and I'm an interventional cardiologist practicing in Turing, Italy. Today, I'll be discussing the results of the COAP 2D trial, which has been presented the 17th of September during the late breaking clinical science session at TCT 2022. Here we meet for PCR online, StudyPI, Dr. Scott Lim from the University of Virginia, and Dr. Kulo Janis. Okay. Thanks for accepting this invitation and congratulations for the trial's results and for the simultaneous publication on Jack cardiovascular interventions. So my first question is, this is a comparative study evaluating Pascal device versus the MitraClip system. What is the background and the aim of this trial? Sure, I'll take that one. And it's an honor for both of us to be here because this trial has been a labor of love, not just by us, but so many sites. We had over 50 sites in the US, Canada and EU participating. So the background behind it is we know for patients with severe, significant degenerative mitral valve disease, surgery works very well for those that can have surgery. And for those that can't, TIR has a role. But for so long, for the, more than the past decade, we really only had one therapy and we did not have any further randomized clinical trials in this space. And so for the past decade, this has become only the second RCT in this space. I think one of the exciting things it really has showed, not for any one device, but the entire field, the results have gotten much better in terms of both safety and efficacy. Okay. The uh, mean age of patient enrolled in the trial was 81 years in both group, and the mean error score was about four in both groups. According to the study design, a patient at prohibitive surgical risk were enrolled. How did you define this prohibitive surgical risk? So every patient coming into the trial was evaluated both, both by the heart team at each site, which included an interventional cardiologist and a cardiac surgeon, and they had to deem the patient prohibitive surgical risk. And it was either by an STS score or some factor was not captured by the STS or Euroscore risk calculators. And the most common such factor in more than 80% of such patients was frailty. Okay. Uh, this was a non-inferiority trial assessing clinical and echocardiographic endpoints in patients treated with the Pascal device as compared to the MitraClip device. Uh, a large non-inferiority margin of 15% for the, for the primary safety endpoint and 18 for the secondary efficacy endpoint was selected. Over said this non-inferiority margins. Sure. So when we started this trial and even the planning up for this trial, we had limited data available to guide us in that. In fact, the, as I mentioned before, the only previous study in this space that was randomized was the Everest II trial. So we used that data from the Everest II trial to form the non-inferiority endpoints. As you can see, they were rather generous, but despite that, even if they were half of what they were, this trial results still would have made that easily. Okay. Could you please provide more data on the Bayesian adaptive design that you adopted in your study? Because this yes. is quite new. Yes, it is, but it is really quite uh, useful. So the concept behind the Bayesian adaptive trial design, in particular for this trial, is the trial was gonna overall enroll 300 patients. But our statisticians were able to do some very important analyses, some modeling to predict the likelihood of trial success. And it allowed us to do an early look at the trial results after the first 180 patients were enrolled and we had their data, if the likelihood of trial success was greater than 96.5%. If we missed that, then it would look again at 210 or 240 patients or the final 300. But with this first look, it clearly met it and that allowed us to release these results after the first 180 patients. I would note that we will follow up and subsequently release the entire cohort of 300 patients data. So basically this allowed to shorten the enrollment period of a trial. Yes, exactly. Okay. So primary trial safety endpoint was the occurrence of major adverse event at 30 days. How were these events defined? Sure, it was a composite major adverse event rate of death, stroke, myocardial infarction, need for new dialysis, um, 
bleeding is defined by the MBAR criteria or need for new non-elective mitral valve intervention. Okay. What was the performance of the Pascal device as compared to the mitral clip system on MR reduction? I'll let my colleague Costa answer that. Thank you, Luigi, and thank you, Scott. So MR reduction was significant across both groups of patients, both the Pascal cohort and the mitral clip group. We had MR that was less than or equal to two plus, so two plus or less in 98% of patients, basically in both cohorts. So this is uh, looking at, it's a paired analysis looking at six months. When we look a little more closely for MR that's one plus or less, um, <clears throat> excuse me, for the Pascal group, we saw that 84% of patients had MR that was mild or less at six months. In the mitral clip group, we saw 71% of patients had MR that was one plus or less. There is no, there are no, the, the numbers are still relatively small. This is an initial look, it's not the full cohort. So looking between the two groups, the comparison was not statistically significant. Okay. Um, one thing we did note uh, that there was, the one difference that we did note was the durability uh, of this MR result over time. So um, in the Pascal group, we saw that MR of one plus or less was fairly sustained starting at discharge all the way out to six months. At discharge, I believe the number was about 88% were at mild or less. And at six months, 84% was mild or less. In the mitral clip group, it was slightly different. We saw um, high success rate of one plus or less at discharge. However, there was some degradation starting at in the high 80s of mild or less going down to 71%. So still limited numbers, early data, but we look forward to, uh, you know, teasing this out in the future. But do you believe that having a MR2 plus or 1 plus in the long run will really make the difference from a clinical standpoint in this class of patients? I think so. it's, a, it's, a, it's a great question. Um, I think uh, we strive for MR that's 1 plus or less, but I think it really depends on the patient. Um, it's, um, it's and, and a couple of things. It depends on the risk of the patient, of course, but it also depends on the patient's anatomy. So what we can accomplish with TIER, sometimes we're, we're, we're limited because of, you know, complexities of patient anatomy, um, starting mitral valve areas. So in those folks, I think, you know, two plus uh, or less, you know, is um, two plus may be a, an acceptable result. However, in, you know, in the, uh, in, in the patients where we can get to a better result, we do think that uh, clinically it makes a difference in the long term. I agree with what Costa said, and I would also add on there is an increasing body of evidence that shows that there is a clinically relevant improvement in our patients of, that we can get to one plus over two plus. And then the other piece that I would also add to this is there's a number of clinical trials now looking to go head to head tier versus surgery in lower risk patient strata. And those patients, we really have to be zero to one plus. Yeah, yeah. MR is a spectrum. So we have to treat the full spectrum. So, Constantinos, what are the ideal anatomical characteristics of tier patient with severe degenerative mitral regurgitation that should support the use of PASCAR rather than the mitral clip device, according to the results of your trials? So I think, you know, there's going to be a large number of patients that we could treat um, equally well, I think, with, with both sets of devices. And, you know, Dr. Lim has, you know, previously published on, on the classification, looking at uh, green, yellow, red in terms of uh, tier suitability um, for, uh, you know, for mitral regurgitation. So I think a lot of the green tier patients, the green, uh, the green patients are going to be well suited for, for, for both devices. This is disease that's, you know, A2, P2, adequate valve area, really just very favorable anatomy. In my opinion, in my mind, I think the Pascal may lend itself to um, being, a, you know, a nice, a, a nice option for those patients that have um, a little bit more complexity. Uh, some of the patients that would fall into the yellow, uh, into the yellow tier, uh, the yellow zone rather than just the green. These are patients that may be non-A2P2 disease. So things that gets, um, types of disease that gets closer to the commissures. Um, valve areas that may be a little bit more borderline um, than what we'd like to see. And there are a couple of unique features to the Pascal device um, that you know, may lend itself uh, to better outcomes in these patients. 
Uh, the fact that we're able to grasp leaflets independently, it's obviously a, it's obviously a big deal. But even more than that, you know, there's one, one of the key differences with the Pascal devices, we have a single row of retention elements, basically on the distal, on the distal edge of the clasp. So um, rather than having four or six you know, rows of retention elements, so that, um, you know, our impression is, or our suspicion is that that may um, allow for um, a little bit more ease in terms of maneuvering within the subalveolar apparatus, uh, where you have high potential for interacting with cords or with leaflets. So there may be, uh, you know, there may be a benefit, uh, uh, at least that I could foresee, you know, in those types of situations. Okay. Scott, anything you want to add as, a, as, a, as an experienced tier operator? I think you really pointed out very nicely that the majority of patients can be well-treated with either device in the entire tier field has moved forward. So we're now getting really excellent results. Yeah, okay. Absolutely. So a question to you both. What is, in your opinion, the main finding of this study? The main finding, I think, number one is what I just said. That the results from tier, whichever device, is very safe and now has become very high degree of efficacy. Second thing, the Pascal device in the class 2D trial met its primary endpoint for safety and efficacy. And this is just the first look, the initial cohort of 180 patients will subsequently report out in the entire 300 patient cohort. So thanks for allowing us to get into the details of your study. Uh, for our audience, you can already find the published manuscript on Jack Cardiovascular Intervention website. So thanks you both and congratulations for the results of your, of your uh, trial. Luigi, thank you. Thank you, Luigi. You are welcome.